um, with the help of a quote by B Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, those who forget history cannot history. We would like to commence our session for today. Our guest lecturer for today is Ms. Riddhi Joshi. She is a postgraduate student pursuing a master's degree in ancient history and archaeology from the University of Mysore. She has completed her graduation in history, English, and sociology from a premier women's educational institution called Jyoti Nivas College. She, deserve, she um, received the diploma certificate course in Montessori teaching from the Global Montessori and Teaching Training Institute and was a recipient of the Indian Navy Scholarship. Good morning, my name is Komal. To begin with, I would like to introduce our founding principal of Dean's Institutions, Shanti Ma. She is the guiding force behind all d -Nights. Due to some last minute commitments, uh, she was not able to attend the meeting. Hi, I'm Anisha, a humanities student in PUC2. I would like to welcome the principal of Dean's PU College, Chandra Ma'am, to this guest lecture session. She is the torchbearer for all the PUC d -Nights. Uh, again, uh, Riti, I will just uh, bring it to your notice that we just now received a message that the PUC2 exams have been cancelled too. So okay. ma'am just now called me. Yeah, ma'am just now called me and she said lots of meetings have been. She actually was trying to join and okay. then she got, uh, actually I saw her trying to join. And that is when uh, she got the message that she has to join a few meetings with the PUC department. Okay. Because now protocols have to be set in order. So she was telling me to pass on the message. She's extremely sorry, but she will try to come in if she can manage uh, 10 minutes. So, Pritika, take over from there, dear. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, good morning. I'm Pritika from Theater to Humanity. I would like to introduce to you our class, the first humanities batch of Dean's View College. We are all looking forward to the guest session, uh, guest lecture session. I'm looking forward to meeting you people as well and talking about archaeology to you all. Um, so good morning, I'm Aisha from Creative Humanities. I would now, now like to hand over the session to Riti Ma. Please take over and uh, uh, please take over and take us on a journey into your path. Thank you, Aisha. And uh, a very good morning to everyone. Namaste. I hope you've all had your breakfast and everything and you're all energized for today's session. I'm extremely, uh, I, I don't know if I should be apologetic or what, but I know we have lost out on a lot of time already. So I'll try to, you know, wrap this up warp speed. But uh, okay, I'll just share my screen now. And uh, yeah. All right. Can you all see it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma now, yes. Um, we will start now. So the question for today, okay, today's session is to dig or not to dig? Okay, now because there is always this uh, looming question when we, whenever we are uh, addressing to archaeology, uh, we, we always believe that archaeology is all about digging and finding treasures and, you know, going to amazing places, basically your basic Indiana Jones uh, entire setup. So the question that everyone, or at least in the general public, those who are not in the archaeology community, they always feel that, Acha, okay, yeah, so if you're talking about archaeology, it's digging, right? You, you dig and you find treasures. And that's not the only thing. So uh, in today's session, I will be taking you all into a small uh, sort of journey into what archaeology is and what is uh, the various components of archaeology. And uh, the second part would be how can we challenge some stereotypical notions about archaeology and uh, you know uh, just look at what archaeology has been shown as and what archaeology really is. And also to help you understand how archaeology plays a role in history making and not just uh, there's a difference between history, creating history and history making and history reconstruction. So what exactly does archaeology look into in these three aspects with a special reference to our Indian archaeology or Indian culture. And then I would also go about and show you how archaeology is a dynamic enigma and you know it's it's 
it's a pool of all these various disciplines like sciences in fact there's a little bit of maths also don't get scared i know ev- most of us whenever we listen to uh, maths we were like oh my god no okay what is happening but it's a very very small aspect of it but it's a lot of history a lot of science and a lot of fun and also to discuss about a few career options and educational options that you people will have in the future to take up archaeology or to take up culture studies now uh, i would like to start with a little story i know i've been short on time but uh, anyway there's not uh, there's no less time for stories in our lives right in fact our whole life no no you don't have to worry about time at all uh, right. riddhi you don't have to because we have uh, till 12:50 at our disposal great. and i will get the pew one yeah i will get the pew one girls to join us great 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 then we have time questions. that's what a historian needs we need time we need <laughs> and we we need actually a lot of time so okay starting with the story time now uh, if you hear uh, you know these the stereotypical notions about archaeologists uh, that uh, oh these people are nerds and uh, some some actually go about and say that archaeologists though you know they go to these places and they look very beautiful and you know they uh, like lara croft and they like indiana jones or that character from uh, mummy i don't remember his name rick rick was it i don't i don't remember but uh, you know they always shown that you know we're very well chiseled and we're very uh, beautiful and we've got a very good flow over language uh, language may be beautiful some of us are inside and out and some are just inside but um, now this thing about stories archaeologists are great storytellers story is our life and whenever we go into the field we try to talk about what is that particular story that maybe a piece of bone or a piece of stone tool is showing us and you know we we create our entire life around these stories so what is my story now this is a little bit of my story of how i came into archaeology and how i pursued history and what is it uh, what are the steps that i use to understand history now um as um a lot of you have pointed out in the introduction which i am very humbled by i was a history student since my 11th i was just like you i took up history in 11th and 12th and uh, my interest in history was actually from the very beginning from the time i was probably what four or five and the first time i used to read these uh, amar chitra kathas and all these comics tinkles folk tales of japan and russia so i was very enthralled by the kind of a uh, culture that was you know produced in those stories and not only culture i was very enthralled by flying uh, demons and apsaras and flying vimanas and all these uh, uh, very fantastical things that you know just seemed to be right out of a steven spielberg movie and you know something like a dystopian harry potterish kind of hogwarts fantasy so it was it was very much like that i am not a harry potter head so please just spare me on that but uh, okay there are two people waiting and i have admitted them all right so yeah uh, as i was saying i was always interested in history from the beginning and uh, i took this up as my interest and uh, i went about and fell prey now i will use the word prey uh necessarily because i fell prey to these youtube videos and you know these very uh, uh amazing uh, blogs which talked about uh, 3 lakh year old civilizations and uh, large giant skeletons found in sri lanka and uh, what radioactive soil found in kurukshetra showing that mahabharat had taken place so i was wondering that oh my god these things are there that means our epics have happened and uh, so i should read more about my epics and when i read more about the epics and i saw the material that was already available to me as a as a student as not a student of archaeology or of history but just as a lay child i was wondering that okay so maybe if i read more about these things and if i read uh, more uh, and if i look out more for these things maybe i would end up proving that mahabharat did happen or ramayan did happen right but uh, that was not the case so what happened and i remember this very clearly the first time i read a book of history you know a book that was written by an eminent archaeologist uh, and historian dr rs sharma and um, 
I read his book, and the first thing that came into my mind was, uh, maybe Ram. Okay, Ram could have been a chief. He could have been a king of a village. You know, a village which is even smaller than the villages that we find today. Okay, and uh, maybe his hut was the largest hut. of them all of you know of all the villages uh, of all the huts that were there in the village and maybe we did not have monkeys who could you know become either this small or who could become uh, this big you know and, uh, maybe there were no flying vimanas and this could be part of a poet's imagination and you know these these things just made me redefine what i used to think redefine my truth and i felt a little bad but then i realized that come on you know history just keeps going on and archaeological discoveries just keep happening so i can't just feel bad about something i had my belief set on right we need to keep changing our minds so if you heard my story properly and you must be wondering why is she talking about these youtube videos and these books that she's read fine we get she's a nerd or maybe she's not and she's just showing off but you know if you've heard me properly and if you observed certain things that i'm saying i have just told you the steps that were involved in understanding history all right so um okay what is happening now yeah so my sources initially were the amar chitra kathas and the youtube channels and then my observations were the fact that um i saw flying vimanas and flying apsaras and ram and sita and the brahmastra yuddha that happened in mahabharat and all those you know mythical uh, or legendary i wouldn't say mythical but legendary uh, events that had taken place my interpretation was my truth what i thought was right so uh, you know i thought that yeah maybe ram did ram was there okay and uh, okay let's not talk only about ram let's just spare him a little bit air but uh, you know maybe uh, uh, these nuclear wars did happen and maybe we did have you know uh, amazing weapons that could you know just uh, if you just think of a weapon and the weapon would uh, uh, appear right but then when i read my books i came across this i came across a conflict within myself and that conflict were the debates that i had with myself and that made me redefine my theories of what was there and what was not there and that made me go back to my sources those epics and uh, those stories and the folk tales in a very different perspective so i you know i tried to assimilate these things in my studies and this is the reason why i took up history to understand this entire cyclical process that takes place now um what is archaeology now i've been talking about archaeological discoveries and everything and uh, you know um again men and women who look very beautiful going into these exotic places what is this why do you always say that you dig and do we always dig now archaeology the look likes of archaeology are found in all these popular medias they are found in uh, uh movies they are found in uh, Uh, videos and documentaries and in books in if you heard of this uh, gentleman called Matthew Riley and Amish Tripathi our own indian people Amish Tripathi and uh, Ashwin Sanghi and Christopher uh, Christopher who is Dolan Doyle Christopher Doyle or Dolan and uh, Doyle yeah sorry Christopher Doyle all these people they've written books about archaeologists and archaeology so is it that uh, is archaeology that archaeological digs are shown through you know discoveries you know discovery of the century discovery of the millennium uh, in exotic locations in either peru or in uh, egypt or in some remote desert or some forest and i don't i know i don't really understand where they come up with these locations but uh, you know beautiful men and women just trying to save the world like the responsibility of saving the world is upon us archaeologists now so archaeology then would be digging treasure hunting rescuing the world from uh, doom and finding shangrila and talking to yetis so that is what archaeology has been shown as all right now um that means archaeology and archaeologists would look like this now we aren't really that glamorous okay we aren't really like angelina jolie and uh, 
uh, oh my god, I forgot the name of the person. He's Harrison Ford. How can I forget it? He's actually okay. I I will get you know come into. Uh, I'll just call guilty over here. And Harrison Ford is my favorite actor. But apart from that, he does not do justice to archaeology. So what archaeology really is? Is it fun? Definitely, it is amazing. And is it adventure? Lots and lots of adventure. I will tell you how. Fiction. Well, we deal a lot of uh, a lot with myths and uh, not necessary all all the time myths because a lot of us try to prove certain aspects of history which are there already and which we know are true but it's just that we don't really have a material to prove that they are true so fiction yes myths yes but not always science a lot of it again don't be alarmed when i say science science is not only physics and maths and all your chemistry that is an important part but it's not always that so you know uh, i know a uh, ma'am has told me that a lot of you actually were uh, uh, at the top of your classes in 10th and you chose history i was so happy when ma'am had told me that and you know it 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 felt really nice that people actually choosing history people actually are choosing humanity so that you know resonates a lot with me as well so uh, research and reading yes archaeologists now this is one uh, stereotype which is true archaeologists are not we love to read because that is the only source we get to understand the field and digging well i hate to break it to you people but digging is just a very small part of archaeology excavations is a very very small part of archaeology treasure hunting well the only hunters that we appreciate are the early hunter gathering societies and not really thieves and grave hunters and grave robbers so those people no we don't like them and we don't like treasure hunting it takes a lot out of you know it just ruins a lot of our work rescuing the world from doom i uh, see the responsibility of rescuing what people do and what their decisions are it's not upon us we just throw out the facts and uh, yeah maybe we do save people from doom like beliefs and false interpretations and mis uh, informations so okay maybe yeah we do save people uh, okay now these are a few glimpses i wanted to share from the field Uh, these are a few uh, pictures i have brought in from my field experience and from the field experience of my friends and my seniors so over here this is my senior and this is when we had gone for an excavation uh, in march i guess in this year before the lockdown so yeah archaeologists hate corona because you're locked inside our houses okay so uh, yeah now this is my senior he is digging a trench and digging a trench is a very 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 careful um of uh, activity we do you need you know even just 1 cm of digging it the wrong way and not you know uh, aligning the digs you lose information worth and i'm not exaggerating this you lose information worth 100 years and sometimes even 1000 years so it's a very very careful activity that we take up this is when um, this is me and this is my friend we were laying a trench and uh, this is how we lay those pegs to demarcate the place where we are going to excavate so over here can you see my cursor can someone unmute themselves and tell me if they can see my cursor yes yes ma'am yes, ma great okay so this region that i'm pointing out this is where we start the dig after laying down these four uh, wooden nails called pegs all right then uh, this is my senior trying to interpret what they found in the dig so as in when we are digging we interpret what we find we interpret the material and we observe the material before interpretation we observe the material to identify what the material is why is it there what could be the reason that it is there and what is its function and uh, a little bit more about the culture that you know that little piece of iron or pot would have represented now again as i was saying archaeology is not always about digging and not always about uh, in going into the field archaeology is a lot about in the lab as well so you know this is me and a few of my friends we are just sorting out some material uh, in the labs uh, this is in the sanganakallu uh, archaeological museum in bellari and we were given the responsibilities to sort out uh, 
uh, bone fragments and bone tools over here. So it is exciting. It was exciting for me as well. And I hope some of you people after today's session will take up archaeology and it becomes your dream. Now, this is my senior over here. He is making, a, I don't think you'll be able to see it, but he's making a drawing over here. And that drawing is of the site. Now, that is called something as site planning or site mapping. Now, he's trying to make a map of the site or like a very, very general plan of the site. Okay. Then uh, this again, now again, digging, yes, archaeology does involve digging. And this is how uh, my uh, seniors were going about and, you know, uh, carefully dusting and literally when I say dusting, it is dusting. We use dust pans, we use brushes, we were dusting off the soil. It, it looks like a very funny task. How can you just dust off dust from dust? But that is what we do. And these are a few tools that archaeologists employ, uh, employ. So this is over here. This black and white thing is a scale that we employ for photography. And these over here are our best friends. Now, these are your fawdas and your uh, pick pickaxes and axes and all those things. OK, uh, so this meeting now has lim unlimited minutes. OK, oh, great. OK. Okay, and this is me over here. We are just collecting soil samples from this place, from the trench, and we have to go inside the trench. We have to sit inside the trench and take out those materials because we, we have to get our hands dirty. We don't really have a choice. Now, um, so after all these things, what have you people told me what archaeology is? You remember, uh, I had asked a uh, uh, second PU to give me uh, a few ideas about what antiquity and what archaeology was. I was very impressed with the response that I had gotten. And I was impressed by, I will take the guilty pleasure of saying that I was impressed by a few of the entries that you people actually took an effort to you know tell me what you feel. And that is what I wanted. So some of you have, uh, actually most of you, you've already reduced my task of defining archaeology because over here, whatever you see, this is archaeology. Some of it is archaeology, some of it I will explain, but kudos to you people that you've actually done a good job. All right, so artifactual studies, are, uh, yes, we do involve a lot of uh, studying uh, of the artifacts. Artifactual studies would be studying the artifacts that we get. Studying things made by humans and used by humans, yes, we do um, use things and those things again will be your material remains or your artifacts. Studying prehistory and hu early human history. Now, a lot of you had mentioned prehistory and early human history. And I was just surprised that, okay, so you people think that archaeology is all about early human history and prehistory. Uh, it's actually a very good point because 99% of our history, of human history, is prehistory. And a lot of that has not been uh, deciphered yet. I would, I would use the word deciphered. And analyzing physical remains to understand human culture. That was a very, very scientific definition of what archaeologists actually do. So, uh, yeah, we do analyze a lot of uh, physical remains. And all of that is to understand human culture. Self-reflection. I was, I was just trying to understand what uh, the context of self-reflection was. And I was really uh, impressed by this because... Archaeology is a lot about introspection as well, because at the end of it, we're trying to understand our ancestors through our lenses. So what we do today, what would they have done? And we're trying to, in a way, uh, trying to be a little more insightful of probably the advices that they are shooting at us. So it is a lot of uh, self-reflection to understand our uh, ancestors. Uh, discovery of the past, yes, a visual image of the past life. That is what artifacts give us. And um, later on, when I go out and say uh, more about uh, archaeology being a multidisciplinary subject and various disciplines just coming in and, you know, giving their contributions into archaeology, supplementing it with a lot of goodness, a lot of it helps us to visualize exactly how our past was. Archaeology as a branch of history and anthropology. Now, these are very interesting because uh, archaeology is not really a sub-branch of history and archaeology uh, and anthropology, but the, the studies of archaeology are actually uh, a very uh, 
supplementary uh, subject to history and anthropology. Ar archaeology is in uh, also independent of uh, uh, history and anthropology. At the same time, it is heavily dependent upon history and anthropology. Now, I know there was a little bit of confusion over there. I will clear it out. Uh, Cross-disciplinary subject, again, the multidisciplinary nature of uh, archaeology and complete study of human history. Yes, it is the complete study of human history because we involve whatever is left behind by our ancestors. So we, we get a very holistic image of uh, archaeology over here. Now, archaeology, let's get into a little bit of technicality over here. Archaeology has been taken from the Greek term archaeologia, okay, and uh, which would mean uh, antiquarian lores or tales or stories, again, the story of humankind, right? And it has also been taken from the Latin term archaeologos. Archaeo would mean ancient and logos would mean study. So the study of the ancients, as we know it. Now, archaeology is a very, very methodical, very scientific and extremely systematic study of the ancient humans and their culture. Now, um, if you people remember, uh, I had asked you to write about antiquity. The antiquity that we're talking about is over here. And in fact, archaeology is not only about antiquity, but it is also about medieval and modern. So there are subjects, uh, unfortunately, it is just growing up in India now. A lot of archaeology is actually just growing up in India. But um, there are uh, medieval archaeology, uh, early medieval archaeology, late medieval archaeology, modern archaeology, industrial archaeology. So we have all these, you know, various facets to archaeology. And uh, yes, so it's not only about the ancient humans, but also about, yes, it is also about the modern humans. But And archaeology, again, is a very multidisciplinary subject, multifaceted uh, in the field. And what are the aims of an archaeologist? Now, what we try to do is we try to reconstruct our past with the material that we get. So the reconstruction of the past and determining the form of the evidence retrieved and then we try to determine the function of that retrieved material to understand the various processes that our cultures have gone through and various processes of not only what the cultures have gone through but the processes of cultural transformation so how is it that our indus civilization transformed into some uh, or you know declined and then after about what uh, about a thousand thousand two hundred years after the gap or maybe two thousand years after the gap we saw the rise of magadha so how are those cultural transformations taking place that is what is studied and understood from the artifacts that we get. Now, do archaeologists always dig? Uh, no, we don't always dig. There are two major techniques in archaeological investigations. Now, those techniques are invasive techniques and non-invasive techniques. Invasive techniques are when we get into the earth, when we, you know, uh, so if you read about any literature that is available in uh, for archaeology, you will come across this very naturally that archaeology is a destructive science. Archaeology involves a lot of destruction and, uh, you know, destroying of whatever has been preserved in a very pristine condition. That is true because in order to retrieve, we need to go in. We need to, you know, uh, go about and uh, take material out. Otherwise, we will not be able to understand. So we do justify our little sins over here, but it is necessary. Uh, you can always debate with me when we are discussing our questions uh, about why is it necessary to, uh, you know, uh, excavate every single time. Are there any other methods that are involved that do not uh, involve uh, excavations? There are. So we have invasive and we have non-invasive techniques. Invasive techniques would be our uh, excavations and a little something called salvage archaeology. Now, um, can you people hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Is it interesting? Yes, are, you able, are you able to re relate to this or connect to it? Yes, ma'am. Uh, apart from Komal, can I have uh, Preetika tell me? Preetika, Neha, are you people there? Are you just sleeping? Yes, ma'am. You're there? All right, great. Yes, uh, Anisha? 
Adya, can you people hear me? Yes, ma'am. Great. All right. Is it interesting for you? I hope I'm not boring you all. Oh. No, ma'am, it's not boring. No, ma'am, it's very interesting. All right. Okay. So yeah, salvage or archaeology, as I was saying. Now, the word salvage. Um. Okay. Wait. I will pick up someone over here and ask now. Uh, can. Okay, Komal. Komal, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Komal, yes, can you tell yeah. me what do you understand by the word salvage? Um. You salvage something from the environment. Uh, ma'am, you would say to collect or rescue something. Okay. Which is like, which is which has been ruined. Okay. For that suit, I I uh, I know. Like I can give an example. I'm not sure if I'm right. It's but, okay. Uh, yes, when, go ahead. Uh, when they uh, went and found the old remains of Titanic, can you uh -huh. call that a salvage? All right. Oh, uh, archaeology. Great. Uh, so Komal, you are actually right. Salvage archaeology is rescue archaeology. We also have rescue missions for archaeological sites because they need rescuing. You know, some of uh, very good Komal. Thank you so much for uh, saying the word rescue. I was hoping that I would get that word. But uh, yes, so salvage archaeology is our little like, rescue missions for archaeological sites and archaeological remains. Uh, now, I will give you an example of this site called Sannati. Uh, have you heard of the King Ashoka? Yes, yeah, Others, yes, have you heard of Ashoka? Yes, Kavya? Yes, Great. Okay. So, Sannati is a site that has been uh, labeled as the southernmost extent of Ashoka's uh, empire, Ashoka's Magadh empire. So, the uh, influences of the Magadhan Empire were felt up to the point of Sannati, which is in present day Gulbarga, which is in our Karnataka itself. So, uh, yeah, so Sannati, now what was happening with that? There was a dam being constructed around Sannati, uh, around uh, this, uh, I'm not sure, uh, Ghataprabha River, I think. Yeah, Ghataprabha River, there was a dam being constructed around it, and Sannati was being subjected to flooding. Now, what happened was um, a very, K uh, Paddaya, uh, I guess, K Paddaya and M. Sheshadri, these two people had, uh, sorry, 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 M. Sheshadri, not K. Padaya, but M. Sheshadri, Dr. M. Sheshadri, he was a professor from my university, a very, very eminent scholar. And it is very unfortunate we do not have him to, uh, we do not have him with us to, you know, uh, so that we can ask him how he did all those things. But he had taken up the salvage archaeological uh, uh, mission over there to uh, understand what Sanati was. Now, what the study and the excavation led to was that we discovered the first bust of Ashoka. So now we know how Ashoka not exactly looks like, but we, we can put a face to Ashoka. And it it was a bust with the uh, name Raya Raya yeah, Raya Ashoko in Brahmi. So that showed us that yes, Ashoka was uh, Ashoka's influence was felt up to Sanati. And all of those remains were transported, documented, transported, and trucked into a museum. So that is salvage archaeology for you. There are other sites in India which have been subjected to salvage archaeology. We will talk about those maybe later because it will take a lot of time then. And non-invasive uh, uh, archaeological investigations. Now, non-invasive archaeological uh, in investigations would be where you do not really dig necessarily and you try to understand what is available either on the surface or with foot surface. So you go around in fields and mostly what happens is when we go around in the fields, uh, we find pieces of pottery. So pottery is a very, very good friend of an archaeologist because we try to understand various cultures or various uh, periods uh, of people that were present with the uh, studies of those pottery. What type of pottery it is, what is the kind of colors that are there on the pottery, what is the kind of material that was used in making that pottery. We usually find these on the field. I will get into detail of that 
So don't worry if you're uh, getting a little confused right now. Uh, so foot surveys is when we walk and we try to explore. Geophysical surveys are your good old uh, GPR or ground penetrating radar and uh, your uh, sonars. So all those are your geophysical surveys where you try to understand the uh, terrain or the landscape with the help of these uh, instruments that we have. And metal detectors are also geophysical uh, part of geophysical surveys. You know, those uh, uh, classic examples of, okay, I have a metal detector, I will go on to my backyard and, you know, try to detect if I have any pot of gold or a pot of uh, tool or, or maybe a few tools that are there or maybe a treasure trunk made out of uh, metal. Now, mapping is, maps are very, very important to us archaeologists. Not only because if we go onto a site, we'll get lost and maps only help us to direct ourselves. No, mapping is a very crucial skill that an archaeologist should always have. We should be able to understand the terrain, the direction of the terrain or the direction of the site, what kind of site it is, where is it, where is its location in the political map of the country, in the physical map of the country. So all those aspects are involved in mapping. Now, uh, let's get into the what, when, and how of archaeology. I was yap yapping about all this, we dig and we do this and then we do that. And uh, now what exactly, which, which time did you even think that what time do archaeologists study? If, if if I just have to put it very simply, what what is the time period that we study? Do we just study ancient history? What is the extent of ancient history? Do we just study medieval, modern? When does ancient history start? So to give that, I would like to show you a small time scale, which is known as the geological uh, time scale. Now, this geological time scale shows us the various phases that the Earth has gone through to look like the way it is today. So the, yellow, uh, the green and blue planet that we have today is a result of the various geological changes that have taken place over the years, over the over billions of years, if I had to say. All right, so the first stage was Hadean and Archean and then Proterozoic, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, Cenozoic. Now, this time scale does not only represent the phases of earth but also represents the phases of life that have happened on the earth so uh, you know our first uh, life probably uh, began somewhere around the uh, end of uh, proterozoic and the beginning of paleozoic you know the cambrian explosion as we say uh, that is when the uh, unicellular organs had actually come about. Now, these data and these details always change with new discoveries. So if you people are aware of any new discoveries that have happened, please do uh, feel free to share those when we are talking about, when we are discussing towards the end. All right. Now, what time period do archaeologists study? Now, do you people see this green Cenozoic over here? Can yeah. you see? Yes, yes sir. Okay. So archaeologists uh, study two epochs. Now, okay, wait. I will uh, try to, you know, just cut it down. Now, Hadean, Archean, Proterozoic, all of these are eras. Okay. Uh, no, sorry. These are eons. And uh, the uh, eons have eras. So there are, you know, uh, divisions of times within time. Okay, so eons have eras, eras are smaller uh, periods of time, and then we have epochs. So epochs are uh, centered to Cenozoic. Now, I, I won't go into that detail, but in Cenozoic era, there are a few epochs or a few other smaller time periods that show us the various developments of life that have happened and various developments the earth has gone through. Okay, now in the Cenozoic epoch, uh, so era, we try to study uh, archaeologists study the Pleistocene epoch and the Holocene epoch, which make the quaternary period. So if you have to, if someone asks you uh, tomorrow that, uh, okay, what, are, what do archaeologists study? What time do archaeologists study? So you will say we study quaternary period, which involves the Pleistocene and the Holocene. Now the Pleistocene was when the Ice Age, the beginning of Pleistocene was when the Ice Age began. 
all right so the first appearance of human like creatures or the first appearance of hominins as we say uh, if you can see can you see it over here yes ma'am this 2 million years ago yes ma'am right so uh, the first uh, human like uh, creatures were uh, these um, uh the these uh, species or uh, species of um, organisms or yeah basically species that we call hominins now there are other bifurcations as well there are hominins and there are hominids and there are uh, hominoids so you know we will just keep it simple and we'll stick to our archaeology uh, you know pertaining to archaeology uh, the first appearance of hominins happened around 2 million years ago now this uh, chart over here says 2 million years ago but we have found archaeological evidence that takes back the antiquity again i will mention the word antiquity of humans as hominins around 3.3 million years ago so from the very beginning of the pleistocene or maybe a little prior to the pleistocene towards the um, so our time scale would be from the beginning of pleistocene and to uh, up to uh, the modern day so we do study the modern day uh, cultures as well so we we have a huge timeline to study as archaeologists right so now if i have to show you it in the in a clock form we are actually at the last minute H appearance of humans or human like creatures were in the was in the very very last minute so 1159 uh, 40 seconds is when humans or human like creatures actually came about uh uh okay just hold on a second i think my uh, something's happening to my internet i will just stop my video over here all right so that you people just see the screen all right can you see it yes sir yes sir now uh, what do we study in archaeology what what time periods do we study in archaeology is it just uh, what do we study the appearance of humans do we study the appearance of human like apes or do we study the appearance of uh, uh, various uh, materials that we find what what time periods do we study now for the convenience of studies we have divided this timeline of human history into various cultures now these are the cultures of prehistory protohistory early historic historic period medieval period and modern period uh for today's session i will be focusing on prehistory protohistory and early historic but unlike me uh, archaeology deals with uh, your historic period and uh, medieval and modern as well it's just i was a little skeptical of sharing all that because then it would take days for us to talk about all those and i am just uh, going to talk about small aspects of prehistory protohistory and early historic period okay now uh so our history begins with the prehistory or the human history begins with prehistory in india it begins from 2.2 million years ago so the first appearance of human like creatures or hominins actually happened in around 2.2 million years ago you know where hu hominins or human like people came uh, across uh, came to india from africa but this again has to be proven through further studies and uh, you know some of these studies are being taken as we are are being uh, held as we speak some of them have already taken place some of them will be taking place and some of them will be taking uh, you people would be taking uh, up in the future i hope that happens and i hope i see you people in the field in the next what two three three four years um, but apart from that uh, now india has been under continuous hominin occupation since about 1.5 million years ago now i will just show you a few uh, pictures of a, a few sites now this is a place called masol in himachal pradesh and masol is uh, the place where we have gotten uh, the remains of hominins through stone tools uh, from about 2.2 million years ago now the chronology of the stone tools that we talk about is a uh, first appearance from the olduvan uh, technology 
and then comes the acheulean technology and then comes the middle paleolithic and uh, upper paleolithic technology so this chronology in the technology also shows us the evolution of uh, humans of how the evolution of humans happened because of the uh, the, the small uh, uh, you know when we look at stone tools how have they been refined so refined was the term that i was looking for okay so how have these stone tool technologies been refined over time and uh, what is the kind of shape that we saw earlier and what is the kind of shape that we're getting now so these refinements show us human ev uh, you know evidences of human evolution so masol is where we get 2.2 million years ago date and uh, then uh, 1.5 or 1.7 a million uh, date that we have got for continuous human occupation or hominin occupation is from a site called atirampakkam from tamil nadu now this site after after 1.7 million years ago we see that hominins and human like uh, creatures and uh, humans uh, consequently have had a continuous domination on the landscape of india all right and then we receive a date of 1.2 million years ago from isampur now uh, i take pride in this because isampur is in is in karnataka so we have a million year date from karnataka okay and that is from isampur isampur is in the bijapur district so if anybody uh, you know wants to go to okay uh, there's someone coming in meghna okay yeah so if someone wants to you know uh, go in uh, Uh, go ahead and just have a look at isampur you please go to bijapur and try to uh, map uh, you know just follow your google maps and it's actually available if you go through the asi's uh, 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 site you will get the location and latitude so you can go and visit this place it's in karnataka please make an effort to go to these places all right and then um, yeah so now over here i have mentioned about jwalapuram and toba eruption what is this what is toba eruption does anybody know uh, the toba eruption over here no ma'am no no ma'am no ma'am all right no, not a problem at all so uh, we have had modern homo sapiens or uh, not homo sapiens sapiens but homo sapiens now homo sapiens sapiens is us as we are today Homo sapiens sapiens were our lesser evolved, uh, uh, at least biologically, let lesser evolved uh, ancestors, right? So we have had evidence of modern Homo sapiens who have survived through a volcanic volcanic eruption, and the volcanic winter. that was a result of this volcanic eruption now this evidence has been seen from a multiple sites in india but it has also been seen in large quantities at a place called jwalapuram in andhra pradesh now uh, you must be asking yourselves or you know you must be a little intrigued about which uh, volcano am i talking about now this volcano is actually located in indonesia so a volcano which erupted around 75000 years ago in indonesia had its effects of a of a huge volcanic winter as we say it up to modern day israel or the palestine region so a uh, political uh, on the political map if i have to say uh, the country, the nation of israel up to that part or maybe a little beyond that so how was it possible you know that a volcano in indonesia erupts and the volcanic winter of that uh, volcano is just felt all over the globe or at least half of the globe and parts of uh, africa as well so that is the beauty of the geology of our earth that is the beauty of our earth that this was actually a super volcan uh, super volcanic eruption okay now uh, homo sapiens in india survived this you know for a long time it was thought that uh, after the volcanic eruption okay uh, arthi jamra munch to okay sorry yeah but uh, for a long time it was thought that uh, the after the eruption after the volcano's eruption and the volcanic winter that had happened 
uh, humans and a lot of species or other a lot of flora and faunal species had just gone extinct and then a few people who were surviving in africa they were the ones who left africa after 70000 years ago and then colonized india uh, now a little uh, sad news for them that is not the case Indians, uh, Indian Homo sapiens were already there, and they were strong enough to survive that volcanic eruption. Uh, you know, so we had a bunch of strong ancestors out there. All right, then we have uh, now after the prehistory period. Now this was, uh, yeah, prehistory has been divided into Paleolithic, the Mesolithic, and the Neolithic. I am pretty sure a, a few of you must be knowing. Are uh, are you aware of the Stone Age cultures? this must be told to you in your 11th in 11th grade oh uh, yes for me reason we had a chapter about it great okay uh, yes okay. Right. um uh, uh, miss riddhi i'm just sorry i'm interrupting you yes, uh, i'm i can see that uh, pu1 girls are also joining okay so we have megha she's pu1 Hi, and megha. i can see one more um yes they have they have also joined okay so you continue you continue they will just join in all right okay, okay. thank you so much. thank you so much. uh any idea what's the time right now okay we have oh, oh it's already 12:15 great uh fine so, yeah we are yeah. at 12:15 if required uh, if required if suppose this meeting creates uh, some uh, glitches mm -hmm. uh, we will reschedule a meeting again all right great okay don't worry don't so worry then, please continue uh, yeah okay then these were the prehistoric cultures for you and we studied these prehistoric cultures with a lot of other materials that i will be talking about and then we skip to proto history now what is proto history a little side note for proto history the term proto over here uh, is only applicable to the historical studies of india and pakistan so you do not have a proto historic period in uh, uh, america or in the europe or in mesopotamia the, if you if you're trying to study mesopotamian civilization you will not find a mention of proto history over here okay i think i have okay someone came in shreshta i guess yeah okay so uh, okay yeah so um, yeah i can see shreshta has also joined yes please uh, go ahead everything yeah, yeah. is so go. yeah so the proto history uh, proto history is a concept that is only applicable to india and pakistan since that is the period which is marked by urbanization with with an available script now the only reason we call it proto and not historic or early historic is because the script has not been deci deciphered so we do not really know what uh the script really means so yes we do have a period based completely on the uh, unavailability of a deciphered script now the indus script does exist but again not deciphered so uh maybe once it's deciphered the, the entire proto history you know the tag of the proto history might change we're not really sure changing of archaeological traditions takes a lot of time and a lot of pain uh but yeah proto history was the period where we saw the first urbanization our indus civilization rise of a known script but undeciphered the use of metal was in this period 4000 bc to 600 to 600 bc so you know we got to know how to use copper and bronze and iron in this period we had uh, buildings coming up we had uh, bricks being used we had a uniform uh, standard of measurement that was being used and then uh after 600 bc we have the early historic period now early historic period is marked by a known script which has been deciphered this known script that has been deciphered is the brahmi script all right this is the brahmi script all right so the brahmi script is uh, known as the mother of all scripts not only in india but also in these uh, southeast asian countries of indonesia or uh, uh, you know uh, cambodia and thailand so these countries also have an affinity with the brahmi script that originated from our own nation right then this was the time when we saw the rise of new religions like buddhism and jainism the republics came about the 16 mahajanapadas and the very first coins the punched mark coins uh, that yes th those were the first coins so they also came about all right now this period has been uh, 
a, a very uh, hot uh, topic for debates for indian historians and uh, um, foreign historians alike because uh, this is the time where we uh, find a lot of uh, similarities with a lot of places that have been mentioned in our epics so out of the 16 mahajanapadas there are the mahajanapadas of avanti of uh, uh, of magadha of koshala of uh, panchala and kuru these have been mentioned in mahabharat and ayodhya ayodhya is also there i guess yeah but these have been mentioned in uh, the epics so you know they try to prove the existence of epics through these uh, through early historic studies and then you have the historic period which had uh, your gupta empire the vakataka empire the glorious golden era of gupta empire and then the vakataka empire rashtrakutas kadambas of banavasi uh, chalukyas of badami and then um, the historic period comes to an end with the establishment of the delhi sultanate uh, uh, that yeah yes with the establishment of the delhi sultanate and that was the slave dynasty i guess all right uh, now i was i have been talking to you about uh, what all cultures uh, do we uh, study you know i have mentioned to you about these cultural periods where we saw the rise and fall of civilizations various dynasties coming about and various socio cultural and technological changes also when i mentioned to you about the development of copper bronze and iron in the proto historic period the technological changes that i uh, i was talking about this is what i was talking about so you know we we've seen all these cultural changes that have happened now uh, there were people living in these kingdoms there were people living in these civilizations right uh, now i would want to ask a few things from you people uh, if you can just unmute yourselves now uh, do we or do we not have a habit of throwing out our garbage right whatever we don't use we just throw it out right i hope nobody over here you do not take care of whatever they want to throw out and you know gives a separate room to their garbage and you know takes care of them or pets them i hope nobody does that because that is very unhygienic for all of us but we all throw our garbages right yes yes ma'am and yes. we usually dump it in the dustbin which goes into uh, the uh, dump dump yard right yes ma'am yeah. and that dump yard is accumulated over periods of time over years and years and years right yeah yes ma'am that dump was you know the, this concept of dumping and discarding your garbages fortunately for us archaeologists was followed by our ancestors and i join my hands in prayer to them that thank you so much for you know throwing out your garbage because that is what we study yes we do go into people's garbage and we poke our noses around that only to understand what our ancestors were like so we use that discard i will refrain from using the term garbage now and i will shift to discard more, a more scientific term but uh, we use that discard we study that discard and we try to reconstruct the various uh, we first of all we try to reconstruct what that thing was that they had thrown out so let's say if in the iron age uh, that would be around uh, 12000 bc to around uh, 300 bc or yeah a little a little beyond 300 bc but in the iron age when people were using iron knife someone's iron knife must have broken from the tip and they were like acha no this is bakwas i'm going to throw this in the dustbin i don't need this i'm going to buy myself another knife so they throw that knife in a in 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 a dumpster right and that dump gets accumulated into the into what we call the archaeological record okay now uh, there are certain uh, uh, you know small niches of discussions that we'll have later on uh, in probably later sessions not today's session because i will just you know get i will digress a lot but um, yeah so we go about whenever we going for our excavations we usually come across these discards it is very rare that we come across something that was uh, you know buried for a reason and that usually happens when we are studying burials so 
barriers are intentionally uh, made okay and whatever grave goods that we find in the barriers they are intentional uh, accumulations or deposits of cultural remains but that is not always the case and archaeologists are not always lucky to find something that was intentionally buried so we usually find people's discard now the study so do you know to to study and reconstruct human history we refer to something called material remains all right now these material remains help us to track human activities and human cultural processes that had taken place okay now apart from material remains there are a few principal disciplines which enable us archaeologists to not only study about you know pre literate uh, uh, cultures and societies like that of the prehistoric people or the proto historic people where we do not really have a script but uh, numismatics epigraphy paleography and iconography these disciplines help us to understand the times when coins were there when inscriptions were there when scripts were there and when we find the evidences of some sort of imagery uh, depictions like that of a sorry like that of a god like that of a tree or uh, like that of a building over here if you can see if you can see my cursor uh, so these are what these disciplines help us so if i have to you know put it a little philosophically numismatics epigraphy paleography and iconography are uh, the supplements that supply to the blood of archaeology all right now to give a few definitions numismatics is a study of a coin coinage epigraphy is the study of uh, uh yeah sorry epigraphy is the study of inscriptions paleography is the study of ancient scripts a uh, paleo and graphy so paleo would mean ancient or old uh, iconography is the study of symbols icons and images all right uh now archaeology also depends a lot upon literature so our literary records are written written documents written treatises like the vedas the brahmanas the aranyakas and uh, the various other puranas sthana puranas sthala puranas all these aspects all these written aspects also help us archaeologists to have a holistic and wholesome reconstruction of uh, of the human past all right now uh, what makes archaeology a dynamic discipline now i put this slide in order to show you people the multidisciplinary nature of archaeology all right so what do i mean when i say multidisciplinary nature archaeology is an amalgamation of these various sciences and social sciences and humanitarian sciences which help us again our sole aim is for the reconstruction so that we can uh you know uh figure out trends and in a way re reconstruct who we are and you know in a way learn from what our ancestors have done so that again we do not do the same mistakes or maybe we can employ things that they had done in today's cultures or in today's times so uh, let's say um if you all have heard of the indus civilization can i get a huge yes if you have heard of indus civilization indus civilization or the harappan civilization yes ma'am yes, ma yes? Uh, the 11th graders can you can you come up and tell me if you've heard of um, indus civilization indus valley civilization yes, the harappan civilization hello yes ma'am uh, yes ma'am all right so uh, indus civilization is known for its amazing town planning we have a very very uniform town planning that has happened a, a great drainage system they had very good layout and they had a very good idea how to lay their drains so you know they first laid their drains then they made their roads and then they made their houses with the alignment to the drains now i would honestly want bbmp and all the other nagar palikas of our country to learn from the indus civilization and the town planning of the indus civilization because boss we need all these things in today's day one rain in bangalore i completely agree yes ma'am ma i completely agree with you 
thank you so much definitely. for saying that bangalore definitely needs bangalore definitely i think all girls will agree with me here <laughs> that uh, bangalore definitely needs to go and study this civilization right yes. i mean, we we should have a very we should just have a town planning uh, course uh, you know for for bbmp officials and all the other nagarpalika officials so that we can tell them listen if something like this was achieved by our ancestors <laughs> about 8000 8000 8, years ago 7 6000 years ago if they were able to do this you have all the technology and the financial wherewithal to do that why is it that there is one rain in bangalore and the entire city is shut Correct. Correct. That is the Correct. case, right? So this is why we employ all these sciences, okay, so that we can learn, relearn, apply, and understand our past and our present, and maybe do something for our future. But you know, humans have this tendency, and I hate to break it, but humans have this bad tendency of talking. Uh, you, you know what? We should, you know, do these things for our future generations, for our future gener generations, uh, and. they often say about their future generations but what they're actually trying to do is correct themselves for the past because you have to live the uh, so correct themselves for the present i'm so sorry but you have to correct yourself in the present in order to live the future right I, a lot of you can uh, you know not agree with me but this is how i feel that this is how this particular uh, you know archaeologist in making feels all right so uh, The, apart from the aspects of numismatics and paleography and epigraphy we involve a lot of scientific studies as well all right so we employ uh, okay uh, wait actually i had to i'm just going to again digress over here but i think there was a little something and i have mentioned this in the slide because uh, hold on oh okay great komal komal are you there yes sir Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, uh, Komal, you had mentioned uh, in your uh, in your little snippet about in antiquity and archaeology that archaeology is a uh, a sub branch of anthropology, right? Yeah, something around those lines. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, I I was very happy after looking at that because uh, you know uh, so the thing is you had mentioned that archaeology was the sign was a sub branch of anthropology, anthropology being a more scientific uh, subject where uh, it studies uh, human cultures through physical, biological, and social sciences. and archaeology depends largely on material remains or artifacts right uh, ma'am uh, riti ma'am i'll just uh, uh, put a small line here that yeah. i had anthropology as a study subject in my graduation great and i can understand exactly what you're talking about we okay. used to uh, take bones uh, hair uh, blood groups we yes, studied yes. all about that so i i can completely relate to what you are saying yeah continue amazing i'm i'm actually glad you know that someone is there from anthropology background then maybe you can yes, correct I me have. if i'm going wrong somewhere no 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 But, you are you are absolutely on the right path yes. all right thank you so Please much that that gives a lot of boost to my validations issue uh, validation issues as well <laughs> but uh, yeah apart from that uh, so yeah you had mentioned that uh, it uh, archaeology was a sub branch of anthropology now i would want to build from that okay now but, uh, uh, everyone yeah okay come on go ahead ma'am i i didn't say it was a branch what i said was it's very similar that uh -huh. anthropology and archaeology is similar what i said that what this is what i felt was uh, anthropology it's more of a scientific thing where uh -huh. they find the remains and they do uh you know a physical and biological and Correct. all those uh, yes. you know carbon content Correct. tests and them where uh, archaeology is just basically digging digging or you know yeah, okay, finding the remains great Correct. all right Correct. very good very good komal I, i really you know appreciate you on that effort and it's a very good effort uh so okay now uh Ma'am, if you are also aware of, you will be aware of it. Why, why am I saying if? But okay. Now, I, for everyone, please open your ears now. Okay. Now there is a small activity for you. Please, everyone, just open your ears. Get up. Okay. Okay. I am going to give a few definitions over here. Now you tell me what you feel. Okay. Anthropology is the study of human society 
and human activities if i have to repeat anthropology is the study of human society and human activities all right did you all hear that yes ma'am there are other people also in the class yes. why am i not hearing adya anisha uh, okay komal was there then sarmishtha samyukta samyukta can i hear your voice quickly unmute yourself can you hear me yes ma'am great you heard yes, the definitions right about anthropology it is the study of human society and human activities all right now archaeology is the study of human past there are other words also that goes into that but in essence archaeology is the study of human past do you think that there is a little difference between the two definitions uh, samyukta hello samyukta Ma'am, I think I she's having some issues with her mic. Yeah, Samyukta has unmuted herself. I can see she's okay. unmuting, but I think she's unable to talk. I can okay, see uh, she has unmuted. Can we can have Sharmista? 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 Ah, uh, yeah. Do you see any difference between the two definitions? archaeology being the study of human history and anthropology being the study of human society and human activities um i feel like uh, um anthropology would be a part kind of a part of uh, archaeology is more of a general from the definitions that you gave i think archaeology sounds more like a general study of history uh, mm -hmm. overall okay but anthropology goes a little more into detail um studying cultures and activities Okay, great. You know, I I I don't know why I I had a very uh, um, pessimistic or you know I was a little skeptical. I was thinking, okay, you people are not going to say the words. I hope someone says the word. You said the word, detailed, right? Thank you so much, Sharmista. And uh, yeah, so archaeology, as Sharmista said, is a more general uh, outlook to human history. Like you know, human history all to all. anthropology is a more specific or you know just limited to human society and human activities okay <clears throat> now if uh, some of you would you know take up anthropology or archaeology in the future and i hope you do but you will come across that anthropology also deals with not only the humans of past but also the humans of present so there is a constant comparison and analog uh, analogous uh, uh what do you say studies that are conducted in anthropology okay which relate to humans of the past and of the present okay and they talk about human behavior within a society and human behavior within a community and the various cultural aspects of humans within that society and community whereas in archaeology we do not only study artifacts or we do not only go about conducting excavations to study humans of the past but because we need to reconstruct the entirety of human history we have to reconstruct human behaviors human societies human culture and everything every little aspect related to humans okay but only of the past there are certain uh, are you know uh, there is an amalgamation of archaeology and anthropology in uh, within archaeological sciences only that is called ethno archaeology now ethno archaeology takes a lot from both you know it's the best of both worlds so what we do in ethno archaeology we try to understand the present day sorry we try to understand the past humans by studying humans from the present and this is mostly related to the tribal communities all right so in my opinion and my opinions can be debated upon but archaeology and anthropology are two different subjects they are not 
a, a sub field of or you know a sub uh, sub discipline of any of or of either of the subjects and they are correlated and interdependent on each other am i clear ma'am am i clear to you yes yes dear you are absolutely clear i completely agree All because right. since i have studied anthro mm. for uh, more than 2 years okay. i can completely relate to what you are explaining i think the girls are also completely agree with that yeah dear Great. continue thank you so much all right now um quickly going on to the various disciplines that are there okay now what makes archaeology that it is today there is archaeozoology that we employ to study the various faunal remains or uh, you know just to understand what animals were there and what animals did we eat what animals did we domesticate then archaeobotany is the uh, study of uh, plants uh, or flora that was uh, there in the past landscapes what kind of plants did we domesticate did we grow did we eat what kind of plants were there okay because a lot of archaeobotany and understand and sorry i'm so sorry but uh, the basic understanding of what plants were there also helps in the ecological reconstructions of uh, you know the reconstructions of the ecologies of the past what kind of uh, environmental systems were existing and what kind of soil types if this kind of plant was there then what kind of soil did this kind of plant need now paleontology i'm i'm hoping a lot of you have seen the uh, series friends have you yes ma'am yes Great. Yeah, okay ma okay so uh, ross was a paleontologist and ross according to joey used to um, what only study dinosaurs all right yeah paleontology uh, i would hate to break it to joey but paleontology is not only about dinosaurs paleontology is uh, has a huge scope like archaeology but maybe greater than archaeology because paleontology deals with the moment life came into earth fossils paleontology is the study of fossils so we study about every kind of fossil from a ammonite to a trilobite to an ancient snail or an ancient snake to dinosaurs and anything that is fossilized so anything that is fossilized i would say even humans all right because human bones also get fossilized the process of fossilization happens it takes at least 10000 years okay so from today your if if any of your bones are there or if any of your you know cat bones i i hate i don't want to say cat or dogs please i'm really sorry it's a soft spot for me as well but like fish bones that you discard okay uh, so any of your fish bones that just is settled on the ground depending upon the acidity of this uh, soil the climate that the soil is subjected to depending on all those things on all those aspects fossilization takes place and that takes at least 10000 years all right so the moment we find any fossilized bone there is a difference between a normal bone and a fossilized bone the moment we find any fossil fossilized bone paleontology comes into question and not only bones of humans but bones of dogs of cats of cattle now that is important again for a wholesome reconstruction of the past now a, a little something we have found human hominin fossils fossils of homo erectus homo habilis homo sapiens homo uh, neanderthalensis and homo denisovans and all those uh, or maybe not homo denisovans but denisovans are now just uh, said to be independent uh, again those are just debates that we can have later on but we have found fossils of homins uh, of hominins and humans uh, may in from the you know that million year gap from all across the world okay we have found it in indonesia we found it we we found it in uh, what africa in multitudes but the sad part is we do not know when homo erectus or if homo erectus was there or if homo habilis was there in india we do not have fossils of humans or hominins in india at least from uh, about Uh, i guess 80 85 or 90000 years ago 
when the uh, homo sapiens uh, are uh, said to have been there i i will go and check my dates again i may be a little wrong because these things keep changing so if someone is making notes about these about the dates of at least the fossils i will get back to you and i will tell you the correct dates of when exactly do we start uh, finding fossils of homo sapiens in india all right we do not find uh, uh, fossils we haven't found fossils of earlier hominins in india unfortunately but we found this one skull that is called the hathnora skull from the narmada valley now this skull has created a lot of debates because what is it is it a, a homo sapien or is it a homo erectus or is it a you know indigenous variety of early human what is it all right then over here we see fossilized human prints human footprints all right now i will just uh, show you the other subjects that we have then we have paleo climatology which is equally important because we study paleo old climate that is climate climatology so the study of old climates or of ancient climates that is necessary to understand what kind of climates the humans were subjected to and they could have you know uh, what do you say uh, adapted to geology is a very important tool for archaeologists to understand the landscape and to understand how people in the past got their resources from all right archaeo astronomy the study of ancient planetary systems ancient star systems archaeo chemistry the study of uh, ancient chemical uh, uh, sciences uh, what kind of uh, paints were utilized now if i can quick please show you this particular okay now you saw fossils right so now let's see rock art all right now can you see these paintings over here these paintings yes sir yes sir the what is the first thing that strikes to you uh, strikes out to you in these paintings oh mummy mostly drew out vibrant colors sorry Anisha, can you can you tell me what strikes out to you in this painting? Uh, yes, sir. They've mostly painted about hunting scenes and used very vibrant colors. Okay, great. Uh, hunting scenes and vibrant colors. I will take the color part. Thank you so much, Anisha. But uh, uh, yeah, so the <clears throat> yeah the vibrant colors that Anisha just spoke to us about. Now these colors. the red color has been made from uh, an uh, yeah it's been made from uh, a something called red ochre okay now red ochre is uh, uh, has has been uh, sourced off from iron all right so wherever we have iron deposits we get red ochre from there and then we have yellow ochre as well then we have uh, can you see these white white drawings over here now white is usually from either chuna or your lime or from shell paste okay so when we apply archaeo chemistry to these rock arts or to the paintings we can get to know what kind of chemical compounds we were there what elements are they belonging to what is the composition of those paints okay and again wonder at the amazing artistry and artistic um, endeavors of our ancient uh, ancestors all right then paleopathology is the study of ancient uh, diseases and ancient uh, uh, illnesses all right so we have the uh, evidence of uh, drilling of brain to release a hemorrhage from about uh, 8000 to 6000 years ago from india uh, from a place called burza home in kashmir and we also depend a lot on management studies to manage uh are uh, to yeah man management studies to understand uh, how resources and uh, facilities were utilized by our ancient ancestors then we study economics to understand trade a lot of commercial aspects of the uh, past societies sociology to understand social hierarchies the various debates around uh, caste system position of women position of children how old age was handled in the ancient societies history again a very very important part of archaeology 
to to tell the story of the past religion and theology to understand what were the um, various religious ideologies and philosophical ideologies that were followed by our ancients now I, you saw the fossils and let's see stone tools over here all right now stone tools are an important a uh, reflection of the cognition of our ancestors so uh, cognition as in the brain development of our ancestors so if you can see from lower paleolithic which was around, which started around uh, yeah we give tentative dates but it was somewhere between 2.2 and 1.7 million years ago so uh, lower paleolithic tools are a little different and less refined than middle paleolithic tools middle paleolithic tools are a less a little bit lesser refined than the upper paleolithic tools then the upper paleolithic tools are a little more robust and cruder than the mesolithic tools and when we look at the neolithic tools or the time when farming started we look at how polished and properly shaped these tools are right so these kind of transitions help us to understand the behavioral transitions and transformations that the early ancestor had gone through all right so we understand their behaviors as well through this how were they able to source these stones how did they make these stones how did they hold these stones so you know we try to recreate this by employing another field of archaeology called the experimental archaeology we experiment material from today to make it look like the past material so that we have a better understanding of how our ancestors behaved all right now uh, that is uh, our stone tools and i have mentioned to you about the rock art so we have paintings on rock and rock art would literally mean you know art on rock so we have paintings on rock we have paintings on rock from the prehistoric times that is before the neolithic and we have rock art from iron age and this is from our karnataka it's a uh, iron age site which uh, called hirebenikal which has been associated to uh, megalithic burial construction i would want to talk about megalithic burial construction in a separate um, hopefully you know if, if god willing we have another session uh, riddhi uh, riddhi yes, ma'am ma i'm sorry to interrupt you dear yes, but it's 51 so we are uh, one minute past uh, their I lunch mean. time now okay so if you can wrap it in uh, around uh, next uh, say five minutes all right sure it will sure. be great, great. Okay. and we will look forward to meeting you again so that they can find out a little more all right okay yeah? okay got it okay so Thank this is so rock art as you can see these are petroglyphs that have been uh, carved out on the earth or carved out on rock all right now quickly moving forward uh, these are the various pottery cultures that we find in archaeological deposits this is the ocp or oka kala pottery uh, this is the pg uh, ocp was followed by the pgw all right uh pgw uh, is the painted gray ware then that was followed by the northern black polished ware which is what we find during the time of ashoka all right and then along with all these pottery there was another pottery enigma that was happening which is known as the black and red ware which is as you can see black on top inside and red on the bottom so this was uh, contemporaneous to all of these pottery traditions all right now uh, these are some pots that we have found from south india which are specific to south india uh, these are the this is the rouleted ware where you can see a small uh, where you can see thread like uh, uh, etchings on the uh, bottom of the rock of the pot shirt then this is the russet coated painted ware which is completely red and these are the roman amphora which talk about the indo roman trade that had happened this was somewhere around the beginning of the first century Uh, of the christian eras then okay uh, i will just quickly take you through this and uh, ma'am if i i'm sorry but can i just have like 5 minutes with the students sure dear no issues just five, 5 more minutes and as i have requested you that yes. we will request you to join us again maybe in another two weeks time sure sure so whatever uh, whatever is uh, you want to share with them we can always because now we have sorted ourselves out so okay. i think we can do it uh, quite often now thank All you right so much then. yeah 
Okay, just five more minutes, students, and then we can, you know, you can, you guys can go and gobble up your lunch. Even I am hungry. I'm so sorry. Okay. Ah, uh, so these are a few myth busters that I had for you today, and uh, yeah, okay. So this is how we archaeologists bust our myths. Okay. Now in the Harappan civilization, if you when you are aware of the Indus civilization, it was initially said that our Indians did not have any history before Buddha. Okay, we are historyless, and Buddha created our history. Okay, unfortunately, and these were actually British archaeologists and our colonial uh, rulers or masters. I hate that term, but still, all right. But they they were under the uh, in uh, you know idea that uh, Indians did not have any history before Buddha. Unfortunately for them, we had a lot of history before Buddha. We had a whole civilization, and this came into you know into uh, uh, this was revealed to us in nineteen twenty one under the excavations uh, of uh, under the excavations that was conducted by John Marshall and R D Banerjee in the site of Harappa. All right, so. that revealed to us that we had a magnanimous civilization flourishing in india around in the second millennium bce and even before that so right after the beginning of neolithic period okay right right after the neolithic period where farming first came about indus had already see had already been sown the seeds of indus had already been sown civilization was already flourishing in india so sad for them we had a full thriving civilization in india all right that happens once you become an archaeologist so you can probably bust some bust some myths, myths. then uh, the uh, theory of how did indus end you know it was said that are indus uh, indus was uh, you know attacked by aryans or it was probably subjected to floods or there was some earthquakes that had happened if you have people if you people have seen that movie mohenjodaro starring rithik roshan and another uh, uh, actress i'm unaware of all right so you must have heard of uh, that that if you must have seen that last scene where that you know the waters of indus just comes rolling and you know everything is destroyed now recent studies have proven and if you can see my cursor i am circling to it recent studies have proven that it was not a flood it was not an earthquake it was definitely not an aryan invasion that had happened which destroyed the indus civilization but the seeds of indus being gradually abandoned was because of the variability in monsoon so the ancient mon asian monsoon system had already begun, begun to collapse around a 4.2k bp so that is 4000 uh, or 5000 years ago all right so if people come up and tell you that are a aryan invasion ke karan these people you know went about you know they just got they they had to be they, what they were shifted to south and that's when the dravidian culture came about that is a little problematic i'm not saying it's bogus you still can prove it if you want to but that is a little problematic and then the earthquake things we we don't really have seismic datas from indus but there are certain datas which prove that earthquakes were uh, you know happening over there because it is again in that very uh, dicey uh, plate area where guj it was near gujarat right so earthquakes were uh, Uh, a thing at that time but not the reason why the civilization came to an end and then the entire thing that aryan invasion happened and aryans later on you know they destroyed harappa and then they were you know the ones who settled uh, the rigvedic civilization or the vedic civilization they were the ones who made uh, mahabharat and ramayan that has been proven uh, to zero right now because uh, the DNA samples that we have collected from a site called Rakhi Gadi, and if you can see the uh, picture over here, the DNA samples collected from Rakhi Gadi have shown that we do not really have Central Asian or Iranian DNA in people from Indus. So they were very much indigenous. They were not Aryans, or we, you know, we probably had people coming in from Iran, but that was later on. after the indus civilization had come to an end questions i know they are looming about in your brains i can feel it you know through the uh, virtual radiations over here but then again uh the epics now did the epics really happen we have uh, certain datas 
on what the uh, you know existence of the epics would have been like but uh, okay i will just skip out the pgw and nbpw right now i will probably write a small document on that and give it to you people so you can read it okay and maybe your doubts will be solved with that but uh, yeah i think we can do that yeah yeah All that right. would be definitely appreciated yeah. all right so right now i can just tell you one thing about the epics that we have a lot of data that proves that there is something related to the epics but the dates don't really match okay uh, in archaeological deposits the dates for mahabharat and ramayan are still a debate we do not know whether we can relate a particular date to ramayan because what is happening right now is the dates of ramayan are coming after mahabharat okay and that is not a possibility that people can overlook and we we can't really believe that because ramayan definitely happened before mahabharat so when did that happen we're still trying to figure that out i will talk to you about this in a later session i promise to you and i will write a document about it and uh, apart from that okay the, the other part i'm not going to show you right now but i'm just going to uh, quickly wrap up and tell you how can you contribute you can contribute by going and doing your bachelor's in history in ancient history and archaeology which are available in the universities of uh, uh, baroda maharana sayaji uh, university of baroda and banaras hindu university of ba in varanasi in uttar pradesh and uh, in madras university so you can go ahead and take up archaeology right from your bachelor's or you can uh, pursue it through history and then do it in your masters you can go ahead and do indology there is a lot of scope in conservation sciences in archaeology uh, sorry in uh, cultural studies you can go about and study numismatics you can study coins we need people who can study coins because we're at a lack of man force to study coins you know you can understand about civilizations and about societies that were there through these coins you can study epigraphs you can study inscriptions you can study uh, you know various languages and linguistics uh you can also get into museums you can become a museum curator once you study museology anthropology ma'am is there she can guide you she can tell you how anthropology she did it and paleoanthropology is something which is related to our early human societies and early humans which is not available unfortunately in india you can go ahead and do your studies in abroad geological studies cultural and heritage management studies again linked to conservation and preservation but also about uh, maintaining our present heritage guides we can become guides because right now the guide system that we have they're all bogus they tell you stories that take you back to you know take back temples to about 4000 5000 years ago whereas temples were probably just you know 1000 year old history all right so we need educated guides we need good guides you can go into public archaeology and talk about archaeology as it is to public and make them aware or you can go into core sciences like physics or chemistry or biology you have choices of those not in india but outside go ahead explore archaeology you guys have a lot of potential